One of the most requested videos I've gotten is how to make a monster follow you only when you're not looking at it. So today we're gonna go over the specific chips and principles you need to know in order to get that working in your rooms. The main chip that makes this work is the vector dot. And what this chip does is you're gonna put a vector in at the top, a vector in at the bottom, and it's gonna give you a number that tells you how alike those two vectors are in direction, not in magnitude. Let's give you an example so you understand better. All right, so here we have two vector components both pointing the exact same direction, and you can see that the output is one. Now, if I slowly rotate one of these vectors, you'll see it start to change. There you go. And as we get closer to exactly perpendicular, it becomes almost zero. And as we get even closer to the exact opposite, it becomes negative one. And then if we keep going, Go to nearly zero when it's perpendicular again, and then all the way back. Instead of rotating it manually, if I just click these little rotators to flip it around like that, you can see it's exactly negative one. Or if we do it again sideways to make it perpendicular, that's not zero, but it's very, very, very close to zero. You can essentially, if you ever see a number that looks like this, some number E, negative, whatever, it's, it's basically zero, just treat it as zero. So we can now use this to make our monster follow you when you're not looking at it. Hey, if you've learned something new so far, go ahead and throw a like on the video so other people can see it too. So here we have a very simple follow circuit. I have other videos covering it. I'll link those in the description, but also here's a snapshot so you can look at it. All right, let's get our handy dandy Barry, everybody's favorite. You've shrunk me, boy. Make sure, make sure that when you configure him, you let circuits modify him and you give him the tag. I don't want you complaining later. Oh, it doesn't work when definitely still works. You just did something wrong. I know it would be easier if all of your problems were somebody else's fault, but they're not, man. You just didn't do it right. All right, so now that we've got that done, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you, at Barry, calm down. I'm gonna show you how to make him only follow you when you don't look at him. All right, so first off, let's unhook this, right? Now he's not following me anymore. Let me make this look a little bit neater. So essentially what we're gonna do is insert some circuits right here before the set transform. Let's go ahead and get our vector dots. So the two vectors that we want to put in here are gonna be the direction that he is facing, which would be his forward vector. And we wanna compare that with whatever direction the player is facing. Local player gaze direction. That's what we want. Oh wait. All right, so full disclosure here, uh, I thought that this chip had an input to where you could just get the player and just put it in. But because it's local, now we have to do a little bit of networking. All right, here's what I'll do. I'll set it up so that it only works with the one person in the room. And then after that, we'll set it up so that multiple people can do it. Like so that making sure that no people are looking at it at all. So normally we have the system running through the person who is the authority of the object. But now we're gonna have to use a beta chip that is set authority of an object. So that way it's only running on the system of the person who is being chased. We wanna set the authority of this object, which is our monster. We want that player to be the person who is the closest, right? So we're gonna have this, we're not gonna hook it up right now, but we're gonna have this set the authority of that object and then we're gonna run it to make sure that we run it on that person's system. So now what we wanna do is insert an if chip right here. So if this number is greater than zero, then follow the person. Otherwise, don't follow the person, which means they're either looking directly this way or directly at it. So right now I'm kind of staring at him. This number should be, okay, yeah, it's less than zero. It's almost negative one. So if I hook that up, because I'm staring at him, it won't follow me. And then as I slowly turn, you should start following me. Dude, that's kind of creepy when you actually, <laughs> la la la, I'm doing circuits. La la la, circuits too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now we can adjust this number to be the sensitivity of it essentially. So, yo, calm down, sir. If this is negative one, me staring at him, then if I do like negative 0.5, it would be like right there. I mean, he you can definitely tell he's moving. So I wanted to go through and make it work for multiplayer. I know you guys are gonna ask, so I just wanted to go ahead and do that. 
Number one, I went ahead and reverted back to where it was only running through the person who has authority of the monster pretty much. And then I took all of that vector dot and everything and moved it over to a, a second circuit that has to run pretty much locally because that player gaze is local. So let's go to our new circuit graph, right? So over here, I have a 30 Hertz receiver running into an integer switch. This integer switch kind of only runs for whichever player it's on. So you get a list of all the players and then we search the list of all the players for the index of whatever the local player is, right? So let's say that I'm player three, which from a list that would really be the number two. So we go in here and we compare it with, you know, I, like I said, I put in number two there. So if you had 10 players, you need to come in here and add a uh, value to compare all the way up to whatever your player number is, right? And then you would also have to make a bool variable for each player, but and so this way, if I was player two, it would only run then on output two, right? And then that output is hooked up to its own bool variable. Each one is hooked up to its own bool variable and they're all synced so that the original person who has control of the monster can access all the bool variables. But the only person switching the bool variable are the individual players. And then to determine whether each bool for each player is true or false, each one is measuring, you know, the vector dot, where are they looking? Are they looking the same way or the opposite way? And because we're constantly kind of defining whether they're true or false, we go back to our original circuits here. Instead of uh, just, just doing the greater than like we did originally, now we have all of these bool variables and we're measuring if they're all true, meaning if nobody is looking at the monster or opposite of the monster then it'll start following people because all these bulls start off as false by default we need to change them to true as soon as the room starts so we have on room loaded switch them all to true and then they can start measuring and stuff like that the only reason this is here is like let's say there's only three players in the room well all of these three players they could be not looking at the monster but because all of these start off as false these two haven't been altered and then this is never going to all be true because these just start off as false. So there is one slight issue, which I'm not quite sure how to solve. Maybe you guys in the comments know how to solve it. Let's say that we've got three players running from the monster this way and then the monsters here. And then we have one player who's behind the monster also running that same direction everybody is still looking that way. So the monster will still follow the closest person, even though one person can see them. So I don't quite know how to fix that. Maybe you guys know in the comments. Anyway, hopefully that made sense. Now, just in case you need a little bit more of a hands-on example, I have an example room set up in my use code RCL one room. The catch is you have to support me on rec room. Have you ever wondered how many 30 Hertz receivers you can run in a room? Well, check this video out here to find out. RCL man out. Is it actually working? I can't tell if it's working. I think it's working. Ah!